They've not even had time to take down the campaign posters in the West Midlands. And yet, the recriminations and questions for the Prime Minister have already started. What he needs to do to salvage this dire situation is to accept the enormity of the problem, these terrible results, and quickly and urgently change course. I do hereby declare that Richard Parker... If it went this way in the West Midlands, it was said before the elections, it could stir a rebellion big enough to force Rishi Sunak out as Tory leader. But in the end, Andy Street's narrow defeat to Labour's Richard Parker didn't provoke the plot some predicted. Clearly it's very disappointing when you lose hard-working Conservative councillors and, and mayors, for example. But if you look at the analysis done afterwards and you look at the, the national equivalent vote show and you look at the forecast, it's clear that they would, they're pointing at hung parliament, a much closer position than the national polls, which says to me that the next election is not a foregone conclusion. We've got everything to fight for. If the Conservative response is to say, well, things are OK, I think that's pretty complacent from their point of view. It's given us a sense of belief um, and any predictions, my response to any prediction is, of course we've got to continue working, of course we've got more to do. Um, I think we're in a much better place than we have been uh, for years. The Labour gains being celebrated by the party leader include hundreds of council seats in England, the Blackpool by-election and all but one of the Metro mayor elections. The Tees Valley, where Ben Houchen won a third term as mayor, provided the only victory visit for the PM. Though the swing to Labour here was actually bigger than in the West Midlands, where Dudley will be among the places of interest to pollsters and politicians. The result last night means people here woke up this morning with a new Labour mayor. And that's not the only change. After the Tories lost control of the local council after losing 11 seats. And when we look at what these elections tell us more widely, then those results potentially take on even more significance. Because this was one of the places seen as absolutely crucial in the last general election and Boris Johnson's record-breaking win. You were a Boris fan? Oh, yeah. What about you? Oh, yeah. He's, he's a straight, straightforward talking person. You know, he's saying it as he thinks. I'm the same. Some people don't like me for that, but do I care? Svet you know, and Andy were there. both supporters of Andy Street too, but they're less enthusiastic about the options than the next general election. Everyone's fed up, but when you look at the alternative, what you've got, is it any better? Can they do any better? Will they do any better? I don't think so. In 2019, the vote here reflected the wider mood. If that's still the case, the goal perhaps should be about trust and not just winning. Well, the Green Party has been celebrating the election of its highest ever number of councillors in last week's votes and becoming the biggest party on both Bristol City and Hastings Borough Councils. But were people putting their trust in the Greens' environmental record or protesting about the other party's stance on the war in Gaza? I put that to Carla Denyer, one of the co-leaders of the Green Party, when I spoke to her a little earlier. I think people were coming to the Green Party for a variety of reasons, including our policies on nat national and international issues. And certainly Gaza was one of those. It's one that voters brought up with me in the doorstep, especially in Bristol. Um, but I don't know if I would characterise that as a protest vote. You know, voters choosing their political party depending on that party's policies would be accurately described as how democracy works. Well, one of your new councillors in Leeds, Mothin Ali, declared... His victory was a win for the people of Gaza. What, what did you make of that? Uh, I'm, I'm not acquainted with Mothin personally. I know that that's something that um, a lot of voters have felt very passionate about, and rightly so. I wonder how well you vetted some of your councillors, because Mothin Ali, the new Leeds councillor, for example, not long after the Hamas attacks, he uh, suggested that the Israelis were white supremacists. He also called a rabbi a creep, a kind of animal and a lowlife because he served in the Israel Defence Forces. Uh, that rabbi subsequently was reportedly forced into hiding. And one of your Bristol councillors shared anti-Semitic material about Gaza. Uh, are you aware of, of these comments? 
Okay, I'm I'm not familiar with all of the details of what you're saying about the uh, the the Leeds councillor, so I wouldn't be able to comment on that. But it's clear that we would never support anything that extols violence. As I say, the Green Party's consistently condemned the attacks by Hamas on the seventh of October. Um, but you concerned do... by those comments then, as I, as I've just relayed them to you. Um, if they are as you've relayed them, then then that is very concerning and not in line with Green Party values. And I will certainly make sure that those are looked into. Are you happy for him to remain as a councillor? He's only just got elected, but are you happy for that? I don't think that would be appropriate for me to comment, as I'm I'm d don't have the full facts at hand. So you'll investigate those comments. We have a robust internal process for looking into any kind of issues with with, with our spokespeople. So so. That will be followed as usual. I mean, the reason I'm asking these questions is really because uh, some people sort of discovering some of these facts about some of your new council councillors will ask, you know, is the Green Party a responsible party of local government? Well, I think the voters believe that we're a responsible party of local government, as we've seen this large growth in the number of councillors. And even before these local elections, the Greens were in administration in over 10 percent of councils across England and Wales. And we've used that power to deliver the things that people really want in their, from their local councils. Well, and some, the fact that some, so some of your of time our... in office has ended rather in tears, hasn't it? I mean, I'm thinking, for example, you got kicked out in, in Brighton Hove um, when you ran the local authority, the council there, um, because, you know, rubbish piled up on the streets and there were weeds sprouting through the pavements. Old people complained they were tripping up on them. So, and I just wonder whether people who voted these councillors in in record numbers know what they're letting themselves in for. Well, actually, several of the councils where we've seen substantial gains this time around are in places where the Greens have been in administration for a considerable amount of time. So if you take Stroud, um, in Stroud, we've been in the administration jointly with other parties for over 10 years. Um, and in this election this week, the Greens have made huge gains and are now the largest party on the council with 22 councillors. So I take that as an incredible vote of confidence for what Greens are getting done. Yes, of course, we lose seats in some places as well as win. And I'm uh, I'm I'm certain that the Greens in Brighton and Hove uh, are, are are learning about, you know, what the what what the voters want and are listening very keenly at the moment. Carla Denia, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.